Hello again, Father Rock O'Connor. In high school, one of the things I got to do to pay my tuition was I worked at the switchboard for the Jesuit community at Creighton Prep. I worked, worked there for two years, answered the phone, uh, called people when someone came to visit them, called them on the, the, the loudspeaker. And in addition to meeting the Jesuits, especially the young Jesuits, the scholastics, some great men, some great men there. Uh, Mike Morrison, Larry Countryman, um, uh, uh, Bert Thielen, and all kinds of excellent people. I really looked up to them, and there's a camaraderie between these guys. And I saw it in the classroom, I saw it in the, uh, during school and stuff, and I saw it uh, in the evenings when I'd be working the switchboard, guys would drop by and say, hi, how are you doing, how's your homework? I thought, well, they're pretty cool guys. Um, dated, I wanted to play in a band, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about music later, but I wanted to play in a band. But get down, get down. And I wanted to play drums and stuff. Didn't work out. So senior year, fast forward to senior year. Uh, we had to, seniors, we all had to make a retreat every year. And, and some seniors signed up to go to, uh, to take a bus ride from Omaha to St. Bonifacius, Minnesota, and make retreat there for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and come back. So uh, I signed up for that. Went up there, uh, two, two bus loads of probably 80, 90 guys. And uh, I remember Father Jane Jakubik gave the uh, uh, retreat. We met um, uh, both the older scholastics, the guys who had taken vows, the juniors, uh, who were excellent guys, just wonderfully uh, welcoming. We met some of the guys who had been um, a year ahead of us at Creighton Prep. In fact, the year ahead of us, nine guys from Prep en entered. So there are a bunch of them. We, we at least got a wave to them and say hello for a few minutes. We were not, we were from the world, so we were not to taint them. Um, and I remember on Saturday afternoon, and it was sometime in early December, I, it was near the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, because I remember we had a huge meal one of those times and it was the best thing in the world. But I was sitting there in the chapel and, and actually drawing, and which I, I, I fancied myself a little bit of an artist. Yeah, maybe not so much, but that's what, I, that's what I was doing. And reminiscing, thinking, ruminating, whatever. And all of a sudden, I had this very powerful sense of like a voice saying, this is where you belong. And I was startled. I felt, I felt immediate peace and joy. And I felt uh, a, a weight fall from my shoulders. I just felt glad in a way that I never had before. And I didn't know what to do. I felt so accepted. I was just in there weeping and weeping. It was a marvelous thing. Now, the week before the retreat, I, I had gone on a double date, but I couldn't get a date, so I was going with my buddy Jay. We went, he, he uh, picked up a young woman named Denise. We went out for a date, and boy, oh boy, it was like kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. I thought she was the coolest thing since sliced bread. Turns out she actually was dating uh, an older guy. But the deal was, when I got back from this retreat, it was like, hey, I'm back, let's dance, let's go out dancing, let's go out and do this, let's, you know, the basketball season and all that. And long about March and April, I started thinking, hmm, I wonder if I shouldn't do something about that experience on retreat. I would think about it, but I didn't want to talk about it. It was too much, too personal. 
So I went to one of the Jesuits there, talked to him. He said, go talk to these guys, go do this. Uh, there seemed to have been a process, which I didn't know about. And I started writing a spiritual autobiography. A couple guys like uh, Mike Wilmot, Brother Mike Wilmot, came down and visited my family, Father Paul Tatro. And um, I submitted my application just before prom, May of 67. And a month later, immediately after um, graduation, I got this letter saying, you're accepted into the Society of Jesus as a novice, and here's what you're supposed to bring. You know, a couple pair of black pants, go figure, and um, whatnot. And I thought, wow, what did I just do? And then I, got, I ended up working that summer for the Omaha Street Department, made some money, gave it to my parents, and, and entered. Uh, we drove up a day or two before September 1. My brother and my sister, my brother Mike, my sister Joanne, my parents and I drove up there. And the other five sisters were at home. And I remember that that was the most moving part of leaving home was going in and waking up um, Teresa and Patty, Kathy, Colleen, and Karen. Karen was only four at the time, and saying goodbye to them. And it was very sad. Um, and, you know, since I, I've had a chance to serve in Omaha, it's always great to be with them. And um, I miss them always, my brother too. So. That's how I got to the novitiate. That's how I entered September 1, 50 years ago. So I'm gonna tell a couple more stories about vocational items and see how it goes. Thank you very much, peace.